welcome guys to ARWP, the All Real Wrestling Podcast. I am your host, Eric Novak, and today we have a special guest. She is Jordan Grace. Hey guys, Thick Mama Pump here. How's it going? <laughs> How are you? I'm doing pretty good. My dogs are <laughs> acting crazy right now, but other than that, awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. I love what you're doing with Impact right now. I love the whole jazz thing. It's amazing. I'm still praying for a future knockout tag champs, you know. Still hoping for that, but we'll see. So before we start, you know, tell me a little bit about you. Tell me why you decided to become a pro wrestler. Um. Well, actually, I just I just kind of fell into it. This was never like a, my chosen career path, I guess. I started wrestling when I was 14, and I just, it kind of took off, and I've been doing it ever since. I've gotten to, you know, travel the world, which was always my goal as a kid, to have a job where I could, like, do cool stuff and see new places and wrestling just happened to be that thing for me. I got really lucky. That's awesome. That's awesome. So you, you never, I you know, I deal yourself to be a wrestler. It just happened naturally. Um, I mean, I watched wrestling when I was a kid, but honestly it was, it was kind of like fate because my mom actually started dating an independent wrestler who took me to a few training classes. So if she had never dated that guy, I would probably never be a wrestler right now. <laughs> That's amazing. Wow. Thanks, so Mom. <laughs> of course. So tell me the experience. Tell me how it was to, you know, start wrestling from not even knowing anything or just watching it. Oh, man. I mean, it was definitely uh, an experience. Like, like most girls, I was the only girl in my training class at the time. It might actually be different now because I think uh, a lot more training schools are more welcoming to women now. So there's probably more at schools. But I was the only girl at my training school. Um, and I was definitely the only one that was 14. They didn't, like, ask my age or anything like that. Texas is a pretty just, like, <laughs> open state. They don't have, a, a like, a commission or anything like that. So... I mean, you can pretty much do anything you want in that aspect. But, um, I mean, it was awesome, to be honest. I was getting paid to travel around Texas when I was, like, in high school. I wasn't getting paid a lot of money, but for, like, a kid, yeah. the fact that I was still even making money was still pretty cool. <laughs> That's awesome. Wow. So, tell me, how was your first match? How was losing up the boots? How was the bumps? Is it, is it everything you thought about? <laughs> My first match was just, um, it was a battle royal. And I was literally in the ring for like 45 seconds. So it was it was nothing. But um, my first real match was with a guy named Zane Cox. I don't even think he wrestles anymore. But it was uh, it was interesting. I mean, <laughs> it's Texas and sometimes they have like strange shows. So I think there was like 20 people in the crowd and probably like half of it was my family. <laughs> <laughs> but it was still it was still nerve wracking. I'm pretty sure I did like awful in the match. And I'm so glad it wasn't recorded. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't know. I mean, it could be out there somewhere. Yeah, it, it definitely <laughs> could be out there, but I haven't seen it yet. All right, all right. So, yeah, you you actually answered a few of my questions. So I was going to ask, um, one of my questions was, what do you prefer more, you know, wrestling females or doing mixed wrestling? You know, uh, what do you prefer more? If, if it even makes a difference. I don't actually have a preference. Like, honestly, just I like to wrestle people who are excited about wrestling and want to wrestle. So that's the only, like, criteria I have even like your stereotypical you know people have like who they think is a good wrestler and a bad wrestler even if I'm wrestling like a quote-unquote bad wrestler if they're excited and they're willing to try some new stuff and they're willing to take you know critiques or something like that's who I want to work with people who want to wrestle yeah. and are excited about it all right awesome yeah because I still want to talk about Bound for Glory you know I, I also I went crazy when I saw that you were going to be for the you know X Division match and I'm still waiting for you to be future X Division champ and I know it's going to happen so that's going to that's going to be something but t tell me how that was you know being about you know there's no crap and again what, the one thing that shocks me is all these memorable moments retirements uh, first matches even moments like this there's no crowds how does that you know feel I mean, it's it's weird, man. Like, honestly, um, and, and especially because it's taped, you know, these things happen and there's no crowd there. So it's almost like you don't even feel any emotion because there's no there's no crowd there at all. So even if like like the exhibition match was like it was a it's a pretty big deal. Right. Yeah. And well, for me, at least. And um, there was no crowd there. So I knew it was like special and important, but it was almost like kind of like fell below the bar of how I was expecting to feel because there was no crowd there at all. And it was live, but you, you just have to wait to go to your phone and, and see, like, see what people think about it. So 
it's it's definitely like a weird feeling. <laughs> yeah, I miss crowds a lot. I went crazy when I saw you know you were gonna be a part of it that it was gonna happen. I was so happy just because you know Impact is ahead of every other company right now. They're doing these big moves. It's amazing. I'm a huge Impact fan. And I'm just loving the way they're booking each of their talent and what they're doing, bringing back legends, you know, bringing back everything they could with uh, Decay and everything. You know, it's amazing. Manic was back for a while. It's really cool. So, you know, tell me, even the Iron Man match with Diana Perrazzo, how did that feel? You know, you have to you have to fight. You have to keep feeling like there's people that are chanting you. How does that feel, even that Iron Man match? That was probably my favorite match of the year. <laughs> yeah, that was... I, first of all, I love to wrestle Diana. She's probably like one of my favorite pieces of people to wrestle in the world. She's amazing. And we just have like such good chemistry naturally. I don't know what it is, but I love to wrestle her. Um, and that match, we actually didn't even know about it. It was supposed to be something else until the morning before. So they actually told us the morning of that it was going to be an Iron Man match. And we were just both like, fuck. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like I was so unprepared, especially because those kind of matches are so difficult to do without crowds because, you know, you feed off the energy of the crowd and you have that, that adrenaline and wrestling for that amount of time straight is just exhausting in general. And that's probably why, you know, they made it 30 minutes instead of an hour because I don't even know how I would have been able to do it. I think you could have done it. I think you could have, I think you could have won an hour. <laughs> You know, I probably could have, but it would have been very hard. <laughs> Imagine if they gave you like Ring of Honor Iron Man matches, like the way they do those. Like those are an hour over matches. Like those are insane. All right, so to tell me. Okay, so we went through a lot with the mix. Like, tell me about your uh, largest card you ever worked and the smallest card you ever worked. The smallest card I've ever worked was it was probably like I've worked plenty of shows and crowds. Obviously, not counting these no crowd shows, yeah. right? Like no. that's, that's no people, but, um, like I've wrestled in front of, you know, 10, 15, 20 people many, many, many times over the years, just because, you know, independent wrestling shows, sometimes they, they have people who don't know how to promote their shows or, you know, it's their first time doing this thing. And, you know, they want to fly in like a name quote unquote, and I just wrestle in front of nobody. So, I mean, it's fine. I still, I still do the best I can. But uh, my the largest crowd I've ever wrestled in front of was probably at AEW. I did the All In match, mm -hmm. um, and I forget how many people were there. Like twenty three thousand, maybe. It was, it was a, a lot I know of people. It was a sold. I know it was a sold out arena. I know that it was probably wasn't twenty three thousand. I'm exaggerating because that's how many it felt like. <laughs> but it was sold out. It was like you know in in the in the thousands. <laughs> all right, all right. And another thing you brought up was like weird venues to me what was the weirdest match or venue or place that you were booked in that you had a, a really bad feeling like you still had to wrestle because you know, it's your job but you were not happy being there oh man i always man i wrestled uh you know we wrestle in warehouses a lot which is weird in general but this where this specific warehouse that i wrestled in i can't i could not tell you the name of the promotion i don't know who booked the show um, but I know I wrestled, uh, a girl named Luscious Natasha. I don't know if you know who that is, but she's, she's a wrestler. She lives in Florida right now. And the venue was so small that they actually had a tent outside the venue that everybody was getting dressed in. So oh. like an actual like tent that you put up like you're camping. <laughs> what would you prefer? A porta potty in. or a tent? What would you prefer? A porta potty or a tent? A what? A porta potty or a tent? I think I would I, oh man, I would prefer the tent. Okay. I'll go with the tent. And okay. also it was raining outside, so it was just like whole <laughs> it was weird, man. All right. All right, interesting. Okay. So, you know, you brought up AW, you brought up the largest card you ever worked. Now that the door is open, I'm not putting words in your mouth, but I'm curious if there's any people that you have an interest to wrestle and that, you know, maybe you've versed them before and you just want another match or you just think that's what the crowd wants or you get messages all the time, tweets saying they want you versus this. Who is something that you want to face now that the door is open with a bunch of companies? Yeah. There's actually a lot of wrestlers that I've wrestled before <clears throat> that I'd like to wrestle again in front of like a bigger crowd on a larger stage because I've wrestled a lot of girls and it's been in front, in front of like nobody or I don't think it's gotten enough eyes on it. Um, but if we're talking about AEW particularly, like, honestly, I'd love to wrestle any of those girls. I wrestled Bit Br Britt Baker once, uh, at a WSU show in New Jersey, but I'd love to wrestle her again. It's been like five years since we've wrestled. And I think we've both gotten 10 times better since then. 
um, Nyla Rose. We wrestled before, and we've actually wrestled in Japan before together. So that was pretty cool. Uh, I'd like to do that again. And then there's also Layla Hirsch, who I've never wrestled, and I think we would just have an awesome match. I agree. Because, yeah, she's just like, she's, she's badass. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Um, that's awesome. So you said you, you wrestled in Japan. I know you did a lot. Of, I know you did a few stardom shows. Tell me how that happened. How did you know New Japan, not just Japan in general, uh, uh, ask you from you know Texas and say, hey, we want you to wrestle, you know, fly out. How did all that work out? So I wasn't actually living in Texas at the time. I was living in uh, York, Pennsylvania, which is like close to Philadelphia. And the first time I went to Japan was when Nyla Rose actually reached out to me. And she told me that there was a company that was interested in using me over there. Um, honestly, I, I really feel like I, I kind of looked into that into that gig because the girl who was helping to book the show, uh, the Japanese lady, she and Lufisto were friends. And apparently she had seen a match of me and Lufisto that she mm -hmm. thought was really good. And she wanted to, I guess she liked the way I wrestled from that match. And she just wanted to bring me over. And Nyla was already going over there and Nyla knew me. So I got lucky that I was I'm friends with both of them. <laughs> so I got to go over for them. And I wrestled. It was, uh, I think it was called WIP Wrestling. And it wasn't actually like, these girls aren't, weren't wrestlers. Me and Nyla were the only actual wrestler on the show. The, all the other girls were Japanese idols. It was part of like, it was a, a wrestling show put on by like one of their bands, like a singing band called okay. AKB48. And they normally like, sing and perform and stuff but for some reason they decided to do a wrestling show so they trained all these girls for weeks and months mm. and they had two actual wrestlers come in to help out so it was it was very interesting <laughs> <laughs> and then the time after that i went was miko satamora actually reached out to me which i was very surprised by and i was like whoa this is <laughs> kind of awesome crazy and I went and I, I worked with her. So that was also really freaking cool. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, because, you know, I've heard so many stories of, you know, how people get called up for stuff in Japan. And then it's just a completely different uh, venue, completely different crowds. How did that, how, did you notice that at all? Like from venues here to there, like how they acted differently. Did the energy still feel powerful? I felt like, I felt like it was, uh, maybe it was because I was in a different country. But it definitely felt more special. I actually got the chance, opportunity to main event at Cork and Hall, which is like kind of like mm. a dream yeah. that I didn't even realize I had until it was happening because I didn't ever think that it would happen. So <laughs> when that happened, it was insane. Like it was a sold out show and everybody was like going crazy. I love the streamers that they do over there. <laughs> That's just like, it was the coolest thing ever. I have this badass picture of me just like flexing and all these streamers are like coming on. It's my favorite picture ever, but it was just so awesome. <laughs> so I'm curious. This is like a biased question. I've been to a lot of independent shows and I've seen that happen. I usually never the one to pull the streamer because I don't know if I get in trouble by companies or if wrestlers don't like it because it like messes up their game going into a match. If someone did that in Impact, let's say Impact, you know, you have a taping, you do it, someone does that to you. Would you not prefer them not to do that or do you not care if someone does that? You know, it's kind of funny because I feel like if one person did it, like if one person brought a streamer and they did it, it'd be really weird and awkward. Mm -hmm. But if they had like multiple people doing it and it was a normal thing, then it would be fine. But I wouldn't suggest doing it if you're the only person in the crowd doing it. It mm -hmm. just, it seems kind of awkward. <laughs> no, the guy, so I was at a KFW show and the guy had a whole bunch of them. He would like throw it around the row. He'd be like, here, pass it on, pass it on, pass it on. Throw it when this person comes out. So it was a lot, but I'm always curious, like if Impact does not allow it or other companies just don't want you to do it. Because again, it's a lot of work to clean up. It's before a match, you know, it's a whole thing. But it, yeah, it is exciting. you know, that's true. And I feel like a lot of, a lot of companies don't want people to do it, which I kind of agree with this. Because in Japan, they actually have set people, they know that they're going to start those streamers pretty much no matter what. So they have people out there who are set to go in and clean it all out. I don't know if you ever watched like a show where they have like this, they have like, it's usually like a really small person for some reason, but the streamers all come and then the person just like dives in and like <laughs> does this crazy motion and then slides out in a matter of like yeah. five seconds. It's, yeah, the, you, it's the weirdest thing you've ever seen. Yeah, usually it's a young lion, but... Some, you know, different companies with different things, but yeah. Yeah. All right, awesome. So, you know, one question that I've been dying to ask you is how you managed to get in with Impact? Because I feel like, and I said this before in the, during the interview, Impact is, again, one of my favorite promotions. They're doing everything right. How did Destiny come to be when you got that call? Who who set that up? You know, did you know anyone? 
<laughs> no, I mean, I, I did know people, but like, uh, I didn't actually know Scott Demore. I mean, I've met him a few times, but I didn't know him, know him. Um, and I actually pretty much got, got contract with, with, uh, impact right after I did the AEW show, maybe like, you know, a few weeks later, Scott DMR actually messaged me on Twitter, which is like, it's, you know, it's, it's a funny story. <laughs> and he was like, you know, what's your email? You know, we like to offer you something, blah, blah, blah. But it was just, it's always funny to me that it, it's happened on Twitter. Mm-hmm. And maybe that's why I'm such a big advocate of Twitter. Cause I'm like, man, like Twitter made my dreams come true basically. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Scott DMR was the one who actually reached out and offered me something. What was your favorite moment, like being an impact? What was one of the, if it even, if it even happened yet, you know, what was your favorite moment so far in your career? Like so far, uh, I mean, one of my favorite moments was obviously winning the knockouts title. That was awesome. And then recently last year when I wrestled Gianna in that Iron Woman match, that was freaking awesome too. Uh, and then I wrestled her actually again at Slam Anniversary, and I really loved that match. I loved both those matches, but I think my Slam Anniversary match was my favorite one. Because it was live. It was my first live match in months. <laughs> and I was so nervous because it was my first time wrestling live in front of no crowd. And then when we, I, f- I feel like we really like killed it. And then we went to the back and then had all these like notifications <laughs> of like people con- confirming, you know, that we did really good. And I was like, this is okay. I'm so happy right now. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So what are your goals? You know, starting now after, you know, no surrender happened. What are your goals now? What are you seeking? What's the next thing on your list? Um, I mean, I'd love to wrestle for the X Division title again. That was, it was such a fun match and it was such a cool experience to like, you know, be in there with all those guys that, first of all, they're all way better wrestlers than me, obviously, but I can't do any flips and every single guy in that match can do like crazy stuff. So it was just really cool. So I'd like to, I'd like to go after that again. Awesome, awesome. And who specifically? I mean, TJP is champion right now, but Josh Alexander is number one contender. If you had to get the experience title, who would you want to face or all, all of them all over again? Um, I mean, Josh Alexander is actually like a really good friend of mine, and I feel like we would have an awesome match. So I think that would be really cool if me and Josh could wrestle for the first time. That's awesome. All right. And um, you don't have to answer this because, again, I don't know if people feel comfortable. But after you feel like you've done a lot with Impact and you want to grow, is there any place that you see potential or a talent that you want to face? If that's something that you're thinking about or even suggesting? I mean, obviously, you know, I'm thinking about different opportunities that I have, but I don't know, honestly. Like, I would be happy with wherever I end up because I have friends in every company that you know, is, is an opportunity. Like if I stayed impact, I have friends there. And honestly, that's like one of the biggest things to me. I want to go somewhere where I feel comfortable and I know people Mm -hmm. and every single one of these companies, I feel like I will be comfortable in because I know people and I'm good friends with a lot of people that already work there. All right. Awesome. Awesome. So tell me a few of your favorite matches in the independent scene that whoever's watching this, who hasn't done enough research or hasn't been a bigger fan doesn't know what kind of matches matches would you suggest them to watch and i would put it in the bio below and they can get a chance to watch it there is one of my favorite matches that i that i've ever had actually was uh one with laura de mateo it's at pro wrestling eve i think it was a couple of years ago but i absolutely love that match um i had a match versus viper who is piper nivens now in wwe the uk scene we had a really good match together um and oh, I also had an, a really good match with Kylie Ray at Title Match Wrestling. That was like really good. So those are the three matches that I would recommend you guys watch. Awesome, awesome. So you know, tell me now that you know slowly things are, I guess, getting back to normal, sl- very, very slowly, but hopefully soon, and things will open up, cards will open up. Where would you want to go? What now that you've been quarantined for so long, stuck in one place, traveling from one place to another? Where would you want to travel to now? man that's a good question i would love to go back to to the uk i always have a blast going there um uh, where else do i want to go i feel like i really feel like i've been everywhere that i want to go and i feel like the next place that offers me like an opportunity to go somewhere i think it's gonna be like a crazy place um i'd love to wrestle in italy i've been there before but like they don't have very many independent wrestling promotions or shows over there but i love to wrestle there and obviously, I want to go back and wrestle in Austin, my hometown. I'd love to wrestle there as much as possible. Awesome. 
So, you know, tell me, I know that a lot of independent wrestling promotions are still open up. And I know that some town does independent shows. Are, do you have any upcoming independent shows that, you know, people maybe in the area would like to go see you? Yeah, I actually have one coming up on February 27th. It's in, uh, I believe it's in Beaumont, Texas. Um, I'm wrestling, uh, dang, I forget. I forget I'm wrestling, but <laughs> I, just wrestling retweeted, I just retweeted a flyer on my page. I can think of the face, but I, I can't remember the name. It's gen- uh, Genocide. I don't know if you if you know who that is, but yeah, I'm wrestling her. She's awesome. She's like a foot taller than me, so it's going to be a crazy hoss match. <laughs> all right, all right. So, you know, now that you did your whole dialogue, you did the whole, you know, knockouts tag, what did you get from that? Did you enjoy it? Is that something that you want to eventually go for? Or is that something that you don't necessarily think you need? So I will say that I I don't think it's over yet. I will say that. Um, Jazz, you know, she's, I don't know how long she's going to be with Impact, but I mean, I know she's going to be here for the next few months at least. So Mm -hmm. I definitely don't think like that our time as a tag team is up yet. And I would definitely love to challenge for the tag team titles again versus the actual champions. That would be awesome. And I, I love wrestling with Jazz. She's just so funny and just like, it's it's such a it's such a, a crazy thing to even be working with her. You know, I like go back and I, I watch matches of hers from like you know WrestleMania and WWE and ECW, and it's just like it's kind of crazy. When did you know you were gonna be paired up with her? When did they tell you? How did how did you? feel at first because you know it's a whole new world being in tag division you know it's not just watching out for yourself it's watching out for your partner so how did all that originally get to normal for you like understanding it um i think i think they told me in december and then we did like you know the whole lead up to it where i was trying to find a tag partner and actually originally i don't think it was going to be jazz i think it was going to be someone else um but something happened with that and then when they got jazz i was like well that's that's even cooler. That's even better. I just didn't expect it at all. And, um, I was just super excited and happy when they told me that. Awesome. All right. So, you know, a lot of wrestling has happened so far, you know, no surrender was Saturday. Sunday was NXT, you know, have you been watching all the products or do you not have the time to just analyze each product? There is zero chance I would ever, I don't, I do not know how wrestling fans find the time in their day to watch all this wrestling. It is on literally every single day. Like, I feel like you could watch wrestling every single day for 24 hours a day and not be done for years just because of all the content there is now. So the main way that I keep up with what's going on is honestly Twitter. I see like, you know, the gifs, the highlight clips, the updates and everybody. That's the only way I know what's going on with the world and with wrestling, just because uh, I keep up with that stuff. But no, I, I do not watch, you know, <laughs> all this wrestling that's going on. I don't, I don't watch all of it. There's no way I possibly could. All right, because I was going to mention, because it was all about the Dusty Rose, you know, classic, and they added, you know, the women's division in that. And I want to know what your take was on that, if, you, if you've if you seen things on, like, social media. Well, Dakota Kai and Raquel just won, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, they just won. So, see, I know that from Twitter. <laughs> the only reason I know. <laughs> And um, my two guys from Impact, the Rascals, who just yeah. signed over there, one too. So obviously, super happy for those guys. They deserve it definitely. And like I said, the only way that I know that, and I know their matches were killer, and I've seen like all the the highlight clips is on is from Twitter. But I'm super happy for for both of them, and I'm glad that they're they're doing something with the women and that they're pushing them pushing them forward like that. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so tell me, you know, you've done a lot. You've been in multiple companies. You've wrestled independent. What was one of your m- most favorite moments where time stood still? It could be a title victory. It could be, like, even anything just with what happened that day or anything like that. Is there any, has there ever been a time where it's, like, moment has stood still for you in the wrestling ring? Moment stood still. Um, I, I had the progress title for about a year, and... I actually kind of stood still when I, when I lost the title, like, uh, Miko Satomura, I wrestled Miko Satomura in front of like, you know, a huge crowd. And there's actually a really cool video of her giving me her finisher, which is basically like, she does like a, a overhead kick to the top of the head. And I mean, that, that moment when I lost the title, it kind of stood still to me because I had no idea what to expect going forward. I didn't know if I was going to be back to the UK at all. Mm-hmm. So it was kind of like, 
not 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 not, not necessarily sad, but I felt like that that door was closing basically. <laughs> So like bittersweet, basically, like bittersweet. Yeah, bittersweet, definitely. I was super happy to have had that rain and that opportunity with progress, but at the same time, I was sad to see it go. So here's here's a question that you know I like to ask: What's next? Now that you know what's next for the independent, like progress is a very independent promotion. Yes, it has amazing shows, but it's very on its own. Where else do you want to go? What other company promotion? Not necessarily company promotion, independent company or promotion. I'm I'm really mixing both up. But what show would you like to go next to? Like just independent crowds. Independent? Um, that's a good question. Honestly, I don't know which promotions are gonna be alive <laughs> oh, <no>. after <laughs> this whole pandemic thing is over. I know that's sad to say, but a lot of promotions I feel like are not gonna be able to open back up because I don't know. It just a lot of states aren't opening up. I was supposed to go to Black Little Pro, but Indiana is completely and totally shut down. Um, I am definitely open to suggestions <laughs> for sure. I'll go, I'll, I'll honestly go anywhere. Um, if WSU opened back up under, you know, a different person, mm -hmm. I'd love to go back there and see the WSU reboot. That's one of the places that I feel like kind of gave me the groundwork for what I was going to do going forward. And also beyond wrestling, which is definitely my home and one of the places that helped me build my name. Awesome. So another question I'd love to ask is, now that we know that, you know, tag team division, you know, that's there, knockout tag is there, who would be your replacement for Jazz? If Jazz decides to, you know, stop wrestling or take time, who would you want the next replacement to be? Someone that, it doesn't have to be even with Impact, it could be anyone outside, someone that you just know that you have great chemistry with and that maybe Impact should, you know, call up and, you know, try to... Well, this is, this is probably never going to happen in a million years, but I would literally die if i got to tag with beth phoenix that would be like the craziest thing ever i, I mean it's probably never gonna happen because who knows if impact can can pull off something like that but fingers crossed <laughs> we got <laughs> aj really swaggle cool. i mean i mean we could do something you know we they're, they're... even if it was just a one-off that would be freaking awesome awesome why why beth phoenix you know what i'm asking i mean there's multiple reasons but for you why well she's she was like my favorite female wrestler growing up mm -hmm. so uh, I remember when she followed me on Twitter. <laughs> I get that I would be like a moment when time stood still. I was <laughs> like, "What?" <laughs> and then she comments on like some of my some of my stuff sometimes, and it's just like so crazy and bizarre to be like living in this world <laughs> when that happens. All right, what was the worst injury you ever suffered in a wrestling ring, and hopefully never suffer again? Man, I have been extremely lucky to not have like anything too debilitating, like. I had a really bad sprained ankle one time, which sounds lame, but it, it put me out for six weeks. And you know, I didn't know this, but apparently a sprain is sometimes worse than a fracture because yeah. a fracture, you know, heals faster sometimes. So that was pretty bad. And I've also torn my rotator cuff before. The reason why I ask is usually after the first ever big injury, you t you test yourself like, do I really want to go back? Do I really want to do this? Was that something that you struggled with? Did you? wonder if there was no honestly no not for me because i feel like those are really minor in injuries um so i i got i got lucky in that regard a lot of people like tear stuff and that's when they that's when they that's when they start to think about oh should i go back or you know they break their necks or something crazy but thank god and knock on wood that that has not happened to me yet and hopefully it will never happen to me do you have, um, and again, these aren't, I'm not like, you know, asking you just for asking, but do you have any backup? Like if wrestling doesn't work, if there's a time you ever want to stop, is there anything else that you've been working on and you've been following outside of wrestling? It's your own hobby? Well, I mean, not outside of wrestling. I feel like I, I always want to do something in wrestling. So I would love to like become an agent or help, help wrestling out in some way. I feel like I could be really good at that, even as just like, you know, if I was just a social media manager for a company, that would be really cool for me because I feel like I know a lot about that. But just anything inside of wrestling, I would like to do. Awesome. And I feel like there's a lot of opportunity for that, especially nowadays. Yeah, 100%. Who are a few of your mentors? Who are a few of people that trained you into this business that, you know, you are who you are today? Um, I've traveled actually a lot over the years. And I, wrestled, I started training at a school called America's Academy of Professional Wrestlers in Austin and then pretty much almost like three months or four months after I started training, I started getting like, you know, flown to Mexico and doing all this other stuff. So I feel like I've taken 
basically every single bit of advice that everybody has given me over the years because I've I've traveled and I went on the road for almost you know eight years before I got signed somewhere so I don't feel like one person necessarily influenced me besides my husband who's upstairs obviously he is one of the best wrestlers in the world and I can never give him enough credit for how much he's taught me since you know we got together but other than that I don't think there's necessarily been one person I would put all my stock in and say that this is the person who's made me who I am today. I feel like it's just been a mixture and a combination of dozens or even hundreds of people. Awesome. Um, yeah, you know, that's that's usually what it is. You know, you travel, just, you learn a little bit from everybody, which is, you know, how it should be. You know, I'm mm-hmm. sorry, I, I like freaked out a little bit because I always, always wanted to see your husband versus TJP, both amazing technical wrestlers. Still hoping that happens one day, but, you know, we'll see. You're They've probably- wrestled before, but again, it was like at a smaller promotion, so I don't think it's ever gonna get released on video. You know, you know how amazing that match probably was, like just the technical ability from both of them. Technical wrestling is one of the most shocking things I've ever discovered. Like as being a fan of wrestling, just watching it, seeing it, especially it's how he so does good. it, is insane. So tell me about Mexico. You Impact goes to Mexico a lot. Is it true the stories that you know people make in Mexico where it's like, dangerous in a way where it's like, you have to be safe? honestly yes and i feel like it it especially depends on where you go um as americans like we're always like wary to go to mexico because we hear all the stories of stuff happens that happens but i feel like if you just stay in your hotel you're fine (laughs) if you want to like like you can't you can't party at night like you would in the united states i feel like that's super dangerous but as long as you steer away from that i feel like it's it's probably fine (laughs) All right. Yeah. Have you, have you ever had a, a scare? You want to tell, tell us a story? Like, because I no. no. No, honestly, because I'm I'm so scared. <laughs> just like because of, because of all the stories I've heard over time that I literally will just stay in my hotel the entire time, unless someone's picking me up. I'll get in the car, go to the show, do the show, and come back. I won't I won't ever go out or anything like that. Um, one time specifically, something happened where I can't even remember when it was, but I was somewhere deep into Mexico at a show. And I got injured during a match. And when I came to the back, you know, I was I was injured, obviously, and I couldn't tell anybody what was going on. But people knew I was hurt, mm-hmm. and they had someone I don't know if it was a doctor or who it was, but they were coming at me with this needle, Sorry. and I had no I, I don't know what it was. They were they were like, no, no, it's for the it's for the pain, it's for the pain. <laughs> and I was like, I don't I don't know, I don't want it because I don't know what it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, stuff like that, bonkers. Oh my god. Yeah, so other than just, you know, Impact Wrestling, you know, the Impact Store, where can people support you? Where, where can people buy? What people, you know, just fans of yours who want to buy merch, where can they do that? How can they support you in any way? Uh, on all social media, my handle is at Jordan Grace. And then I have a, a website where you can buy T-shirts, autographs, anything I have on there. It's jordangracewrestler.com. All right, awesome, awesome. And, you know, I know you do a lot of calendars and I do, I do a lot of private signings, stuff like that. Is there anything coming up that people who, you know, are fans of yours would want to check out or want to participate in? Nothing coming up besides the show on February 27th. And that's actually with Title Match Wrestling. If you go to their Twitter, you can buy tickets. I think there's a limited amount, obviously, because of the pandemic. But if you go there, you might be able to snag one if you're in Beaumont. All right, and my final question is, if you know... You know, Revolution uh, is coming up. It's still, I think there's going to be no crowds because there's no, you know, ticket sales. Has there been any mention now that, you know, vaccines are coming through? Is there any mention Impact might open up even in the area where they tape it to fans or to some amount of crowds? Have you heard anything lately on that? From what I from what I gather, that there there's not going to be crowds for probably the rest of the year. Uh-huh. Which, you know, is unfortunate for us, but obviously safety is yeah. necessary and that's what's key so we need to stay safe awesome all right well thank you so much for coming on thank you so much for just answering our questions and it was a true honor yeah thank you for having me i really appreciate it of course